Exclusive to the CTX700 and the CTX800 is the Step Up Lesson Mode, a comprehensive, multi-stage piano practice suite that breaks down the process of learning a piece into incremental goals that are more manageable for new piano students. We'll start off with a look at Easy Mode, which I unofficially consider to be Step 0 of the three-step Step Up Lesson Mode process, because unless you're a complete beginner, piano's the first instrument you've ever tried to learn, you could skip ahead to step one and you'd be fine, but if you are in that boat, you're a total blank slate when it comes to learning an instrument, it's a great place to start and work on some of your fundamentals. To get started, choose the song you want to work with in the song list, and if you want to isolate the left or the right hand part for easy mode practice, you can do that with the part select button just like before. Now all I have to do is press the easy mode button, which will automatically start song playback, and when I do that, Keep your eye on the keyboard display and you'll notice that the first note of the melody immediately starts flashing. That way, I can always look up at the screen and double check the next key I need to press, which is especially helpful if I'm just starting to work on a song and I don't really have it memorized yet. So now we've come to measure three and oh my goodness, how embarrassing, it seems as though I've completely missed my cue to start playing the melody. But as you can see, Easy Mode will completely stop lesson playback and wait for you to catch up. So I'll take a brief moment to offer my sincerest apologies to the CTX700 and jump right back into it. First note C, second note C, third note G, then another G, but those of you who are keeping score at home may have noticed that in all of my excitement, I accidentally pressed the F key instead of the G. And yet, you didn't hear that mistake. This wrong note forgiveness is one of the defining features of Easy Mode. Whether the note is dead on or completely wrong, any key press whatsoever will still advance song playback. So for example, if I really wanted to, I could just park right here on the C key and hammer my way through the rest of the song, quite literally without even lifting a finger. But if you do that, you're kind of missing out on the whole point of practicing with easy mode. It has these beginner-friendly features so that you can ignore the advanced stuff for now and hone in on two aspects of piano performance that are crucial for new players. The first is your timing, or in more technical terms, your rhythmic accuracy. Like I said before, easy mode is very patient. It will wait as long as it takes for you to play a note, even if that means stopping everything and dragging down the pace of the song. However, it's just as easy to play too fast and get ahead of the beat, which is going to sound just as awkward and as disjointed as it would if you were lagging behind it. Ideally, through practice, you would learn the song well enough to time your key presses to sync up with the rhythm of the part you're practicing. This will keep lesson playback sounding natural and help you avoid excess rushing or dragging. Easy Mode is also a great way to work on your finger alternation. One of the most common mistakes for beginners to make, especially if they're self-taught, is to become over-reliant on one or two fingers to press keys. Just like learning how to type on a computer keyboard, it's much more difficult to train yourself to use all five fingers if you're fighting against deeply ingrained muscle memory from all of that single finger hunting and pecking. The fingering numbers, shown here on the hand indicator, will help you develop proper fingering technique by demonstrating which finger you should use to press each key. This fingering guide is always visible for the hand or hands you have selected for lesson playback. However, easy mode is especially useful if you want to specifically focus on finger alternation because, as I said earlier, there are no wrong answers when it comes to the notes you play. You can take advantage of this loophole of sorts to perform a very helpful exercise for building finger independence. So first, identify the general range of the part you're practicing on the keyboard. Choose five keys within that range, so I'll choose C, D, E, F, and G here and then simply leave your fingers on those keys while you play through the entire song. Because you don't have to worry about the placement of your hand or your fingers, you can devote 100% of your attention to keeping up with the beat, and perhaps more importantly, following the instructions on the fingering guide. Once you can consistently play the song without any fingering errors, you're ready to move on from easy mode. 